Hi, this is Paul McGuire, and today is an extremely important day. Number one, it's election day, but number two is that God, the infinite personal living God of the universe, has given us as men and women, human beings, the power to control our reality, the power to create and control our future. A lot of people falsely believe that the Bible teaches some kind of fatalism where God just like runs everything and, and we just sit in the chair and watch. Now there are certain events that we can't change with our actions or our decisions. Things that God has written in his prophetic word like the second coming of Jesus Christ or when the Antichrist comes and the distribution of the mark of the beast and so many other prophecies are going to happen no matter what we do. But outside of that clear prophetic program written in the Word of God, there, the Lord has given us a tremendous amount of individual power and freedom to create our future and to choose our future. Now, not every nation uh, has been given this blessing. The only reason we have this blessing to choose in America is because our founding fathers established our government based on biblical truths. And therefore, we the people have been given the power to elect presidents and senators and congressmen and so on and so forth. But if we don't exercise that power, then those people who may have a completely different worldview than we have, they will exercise their power and their vision of the future, their uh, creation of the future will be the one that rules. Years ago, I wrote a book called Who Will Rule the Future? or Resistance to the New World Order. And the whole concept was that God has given us the power within certain parameters to rule the future. So, right now before us, we have two different pathways. On one hand, we have those people with a secular humanist worldview. They don't believe in the God of the Bible. They don't believe in an absolute right or an absolute wrong. And they believe essentially that man is God. So, this is their set of ideas. And that set of ideas, if you look at history, always produces certain consequences. Conversely, the other path that we have before us is what could be called the Republican or Christian or conservative worldview. And in this worldview, for the most part, there's an acknowledgement of the God of the Bible. There's an acknowledgement of the reality that there's an absolute right and an absolute wrong. And we have the power to choose whether or not we're going to create a future in America that is based on God's laws and God's viewpoint of things. Now, we should remember, this is not just a competition between two equal points of view as, as uh, our children are being taught in the school system. This isn't a, a, a competition between equally uh, two valid points of view. It's deeper than that. Ultimately, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is truth. The secular humanist worldview pretends that it's scientific fact, but it's not scientific fact. It is a religion. The Supreme Court defined it as a religion. It's just their opinion. And by the way, their opinion in the secular humanist worldview is not scientific. The bottom line is there is no scientific proof out of 80 million fossil records. There's not one fossil record that proves that Darwin's theory of evolution is true. So it's a fantasy and it requires faith to believe in it. Now, each one of us, we're supposed to participate in our governmental processes. We're supposed to vote. We're supposed to speak out. We're supposed to be active but we do so based on our belief system and our set of ideas. The mathematical precision upon which 
ideas and a future are created from a secular humanist point of view, they're always the same. Humanism, without exception, once you reject God's word, once you reject uh, God's laws, humanism always produces totalitarian states and dictatorships. Communism or Marxism or even Adolf Hitler's National Socialism all produced a totalitarian regime, a dictatorship, a centralized, all-powerful government. Because you see, humanists don't believe in God, and so they have to create their own God, which is man and government. But the problem is, man is a fallen and sinful uh, human being. Our, our very nature is fallen from Adam and Eve. So it always goes in the direction of destruction. There is not one single example of a humanist revolution or humanist ideas ever producing in the long term economic prosperity, uh, betterment for mankind. It never produces the social justice that it promises. It never produces the, the fair redistribution of wealth as it promises. And on top of that, you always see a super wealthy elite emerge in these communist, humanist, Marxist nations. And you have more billionaires, for example, in Moscow than you have in Washington, D.C. So what happens? In a humanistic regime, because there is no God, and God's love, by the way, there is always dictatorship. And that always ends up enslaving the people, taking away their rights, making them work as slaves in poverty, and yes, tragically, in every humanistic revolution, at some point, it enters the danger zone where you see mass killings, concentration camps, re-education camps, and the horrors of a brutal dictatorship. Even secular authors like George Orwell in 1984 Ray, Ray Bradbury, where the fire department burned books instead of putting out fires, and even in Aldous Huxley's book, Brave New World, we see warnings of what inevitably happens when a humanistic dictatorship emerges. So right now here in America, we're faced with two different pathways. Again, one is the humanistic pathway, the other is the pathway of a biblical worldview. Now, if we proceed down the road, which we have been for many decades, of a humanistic worldview, we're going to end up very quickly in some kind of totalitarian regime. It may be a soft totalitarian regime or a hardcore dictatorship. But inevitably, history proves that we will lose our freedoms, that means freedom of religion, freedom to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, freedom of speech, and many other freedoms. So that's a very, very dangerous path to walk on. And the only reason people choose to walk on that path is because they've been scientifically dumbed down and they don't know what the historical consequences are to humanism. Now, on the other hand, we have the biblical worldview. Our nation, America, was based on a biblical worldview. And so all of our freedoms such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All of our freedoms came from the founding fathers who were raised up in a biblical worldview. So we have words in our Constitution and Bill of Rights, like the Creator, capital C, has given us certain inalienable rights, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's no other document in any government anywhere that has such a wonderful promise. And we have freedom of religion, freedom of thought, freedom of the press, theoretically. Those freedoms and a free society is what makes it possible for economic prosperity, social prosperity, plenty of food, housing, opportunities, technology, in other words, the mindset, the mindset of a biblical worldview, far from being restrictive, far from being 
oppressive as the humanists are always accusing the Christians of being. In fact, the exact opposite is, opposite is true. Uh, a biblical worldview produces a mindset that believes all things are possible with God and that we have been made in the image of God and therefore we're capable of creating and achieving anything in our imagination and in our uh, idea set. So we can create an American dream. We can create an enhanced American dream. But it all comes down to the choice that you and I and hundreds of other, hundreds of millions of other uh, citizens of the United States are going to make. Which pathway will they choose? Remember, knowledge is power. Truth will set you free. Lies will enslave you. Ignorance will make you weak and a victim and, and a slave. So, we are commanded by God to know what the Word of God says. Because truth is power. And then we make a choice, a decision. We speak up for what we believe. We, we participate in our society and its governmental process. And then finally, each of us is responsible before God to vote. Because our vote is an expression of our will. And if we vote for people with the right ideas, we can have a prosperous free nation, uh, a restoration of the American dream. The gospel of Jesus Christ can be preached around the world. America can be used, which I believe is the heart of God, America can be used to bring in the last day soul harvest and a mighty revival before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if we as Americans are seduced by the lies and deceit and deception and empty promises of humanism and socialism and Marxism and communism, we're going to go into slavery, economic poverty, we're going to be ruled over by brutal dictators, and there will be no legal preaching of the gospel. So what it boils down to is this, are you, am I, are the people we know, are we going to be obedient to God or not? Because God commands, people say, well, well, I don't know where in the Bible it says that, that you, you know, have to vote. Well, that's insane. Jesus said we are to submit to the government in the land that we live in. So if we as Christians are properly submitting to our government here in America, we're doing what our government uh, expects of us. And what does our government expect of us? To not only do things like pay taxes, obey the laws, but our government expects us to function as citizens that are active, knowledgeable, and participate in society and vote. Because the democratic republic in which we live cannot function without we the people voting. So when Christians who supposedly have ideas based on the word of God that release blessing and prosperity and freedom in a society, when they don't vote, they're empowering or energizing a nightmare reality of dictatorship, totalitarianism, or brave, uh, a Brave New World, or George Orwell's 1984. That's the future we're going to bring about. But if we vote according to a biblical worldview, we create a future of blessing, a future of freedom, a future of hope, a, a freedom of peace and abundance, and most of all, the freedom to preach the gospel to all the nations of the earth and to bring in a last day soul harvest. So this is the bottom line. The bottom line is this. God has given us people the supernatural authority and power to create reality and to create the future within certain parameters and within the structure of his prophetic written word before the return of the Lord. Now, if we obey the Lord, we will be blessed. If we reject God's word, 
we will be cursed. That started with Adam and Eve when they rejected God's word, listened to Lucifer who indwelt a serpent being, and ate from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. That action resulted in them activating the law of sin and death, and a curse was placed on the world and all human beings. When Christ came, the Messiah, the Savior, we were given the opportunity by God to undo the curse. And so anyone who believes in Jesus by faith and receives Christ into their life by faith can be born again, and the curse is removed and blessing is imparted. So it's imperative today that, first of all, you seek the face of God. You pray to the Lord. You have some knowledge of what the uh, different uh, politicians stand for. And absolutely, you don't cop out by making an excuse. Well, you know, I had to have a, uh, you spend more time at McDonald's so I couldn't vote or whatever. Or I couldn't miss my favorite TV show. No, that's, that's sin. That's disobedience to God. And if you don't vote or participate, you're responsible. Yeah, you're directly responsible for all the evil that is unleashed upon a society through your apathy. But if you obey God, then you can impart blessing to a society and you can release the goodness of God and the salvation of God. So you see, we are not passive participants living here on planet Earth. No, we've been given the supernatural power of God to rule and reign over planet Earth. That's what God gave Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. They lost their supernatural authority and rulership when they rejected the Word of God. But when we accept Christ, our sins are forgiven, we're cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and now that supernatural authority to rule and reign in this life is uh, restored substantially. And that's why Jesus Christ said to the church, and Jesus Christ is saying to you, occupy the land until I come. Occupy the land until I come, or do business until I come. What does that mean? We're not to, to, to be in the land for us in America, the land we're supposed to occupy is America. If you're in Sweden, it's Sweden. If you're in France, it's France, and so on. We're to occupy the land until the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through renewing our mind with God's Word, by receiving the wisdom of God, we are actively to restrain evil, to drive out the demonic forces, and infuse our nation with the principles and practicalities of the truth of God's Word, which renews our society, preserves our society, and allows God to bless our society. But all of this is contingent on basic areas of obedience, like am I going to pray seriously that God's choices will win the election? Am I going to intercede for the election? Am I going to fast? Am I going to deny myself and engage in spiritual warfare? Because God can supernaturally intervene in an election, and God, if His people will call upon Him, can cause good men and women to rise to power. But if God's people don't pray, then the powers of darkness, the principalities and powers, can cause evil men and women to, to inhabit uh, high positions of leadership. And their evil natures uh, unleash great evil in our nation. When we do that, what we're doing is surrendering the territory that God has given us to occupy. That's why it's so essential that we occupy the land until Jesus comes. But ask yourself, how many Christians are truly obeying the Lord? How many Christians are truly fasting and praying and occupying the land? When it comes down to it, America is going to enter one future or the other. And God forbid, if God's people disobey Him and fail to occupy the land and fail to vote and fail to participate, 
and we end up in a humanistic totalitarian dictatorship, there will be Christians who were in apathy land and there will be a tremendous amount of weeping and shedding of tears and deep regret and deep sorrow over the hellish uh, events that will be unleashed upon the earth. Ask yourself the question, Adolf Hitler, head of the Nazi party, demon possessed, the political parties that, hit, that put Hitler in power were really secret German occultic societies like the Vril Society and like other occult societies, Thule. These were occult satanic societies and it was the occult satanic societies that put Adolf Hitler into power. For what purpose? Adolf Hitler was demon possessed so he was doing the bidding of his master Satan. How did that turn out? What happened was, as you know, eight million people were slaughtered in the concentration camps during the Holocaust. The largest number of people, approximately seven million of those slaughtered, were Jews. The remaining million were Protestants and people of other religions. None of that should have happened. Why did it happen? Because Christians in history, in Germany, at the time Hitler was rising to power, refused to occupy the land. And they were ignorant and they had no spiritual discernment. Even though Hitler and the Nazi party openly used occult symbols like the satanic lightning bolts of the SS, like the swastika, which is an ancient Tibetan occultic symbol, and the many other satanic and occultic symbols like the skull and bones, which represents death, but skull and bones it was also one of the German secret societies. It's the same secret society that was transplanted to Yale University and many prominent American politicians are members of Skull and Bones. It's a satanic society. So Hitler didn't seize power illegally. Adolf Hitler was vote, it voted into power by a huge majority. And you know who voted Adolf Hitler and the Nazis into power? The church, the Christian church and the Catholics. They, the religious people, the people that claimed to know the truth, were the ones who were the most deceived. And Hitler rose to power and was put into power by Christians and pastors and churches. Now that should be very uh, sober to you and me as a reminder of what happens when good men do nothing and evil triumphs. I'm Paul McGuire. I want to encourage you to pray, get involved, and vote today, and do everything you can to spread this message far and wide. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. We have links. We have numerous social media avenues. We have a Roku channel. We have video channel, YouTube channel. Spread this message far and wide. That's the only way to, get, to do an end run around the censors. And that way we can energize and motivate our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ to do what is right and to do what is loving and to do what is good. <clears throat> God bless you. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us.